The sermon for Easter morning is from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. Uh, the sermon is entitled, Swallowing Up Death Forever. Grace for us and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Indeed. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. You know, I was uh, speaking with Keegan this morning and um, you know, he told me, uh, you know, there is really nothing else to say. We're so thankful for all that we have and what God has given to us. That's a paraphrase, and I I totally did not paraphrase that right. But it reminded me of our sermon today, because there is nothing to say, because the Lord has spoken. And when He speaks, we are full. There is nothing we must fill, no gaps to answer for, but because He speaks, Well, that is why we are here today celebrating the resurrection of our Lord. The Lord has spoken and his will is done. God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Indeed, the Lord has spoken and his will is done. Right? By his word, God sent Moses to deliver the Israelites from the bondage under Pharaoh. And by this very word, they would cross the Red Sea. Again, the Lord has spoken. His will is done. As Jonah preached the word to the Ninevites, the word of repentance, they were all cut to the heart. They covered themselves in sackcloth and ashes. They repented. Of course, because... The Lord had spoken his will of God. The will of God is done. And Jesus, the word says, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Again, the Lord has spoken and on Easter morn, his will is done. I will raise it up. Or as Jesus said, to his disciples, that he must go to Jerusalem to suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. Again, the Lord has spoken. Jesus endured. He died and he rose. His will is done. And early on the first day of the week, They were going to the tomb. Being in their shoes, I can imagine as they were heading to the tomb, they were anticipating the body of Christ. After all, he died on the cross. And of course, this would be the next step. This is what they were anticipating. Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? They were ready to anoint Jesus for his entombment. Yet lo and behold, the stone was rolled away. There was a young man, an angel, saying, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. But then he says, Go tell the disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Again. Just as he told you, the Lord has spoken. His will is done. No lip service, no hypocrisy, no deception. Our Lord, when he speaks, his will is done. His word is true. God is holy. And that is why we are here. Shaped, rejoicing, comforted by this empty tomb. Because, friends, we do not follow a dead Jesus. 
For as scripture reads, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you will still be in your sins. Indeed, this preaching that you're hearing now would be in vain without the resurrection. Your faith would be in vain if Jesus did not rise from the dead. Remember, your faith rests upon the Lord who speaks, the Lord whose will is done. And thus today we say, Christ is risen. He is risen. There we go. And we can say these words because his word is true. This is not just a slogan that we say because it sounds good or that is simply a platitude of what, you know, of what it means to be, you know, this spiritual Christian. No, it, this is this is our faith. That Jesus' resurrection has turned everything upside down. From Good Easter, uh, Good Friday to Easter morning, our Lord delivers us from sin and eternal death. As he laid down his life on Good Friday, shedding his blood to wash away your sins. Yes, Jesus died the death. But there, this day, in his resurrection, as he has given it to us, we rise with great joy. We rise in victory. Not just any victory, right? Not just a temporary victory, but an eternal one. The victory that gives us the crown of righteousness, the crown of eternal life. The crown that you are forgiven and that you are declared righteous and redeemed as a child of God. You know, this crown you did not earn. You know, St. Paul says this day in our epistle text, he says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. He doesn't say by what I've done or how good I am. That is why I am who I am. No, by the grace of God, I am who I am. And this is also for you as a resurrection. This is of God's grace as he has given you your being. I am who I am by the empty tomb that shapes me and you. It's his work, my friends. Today is all about His work for you, the very promise that was spoken to you and friends. Eternal life, forgiveness and salvation. This is what the Lord has done for you. And this is your faith. You know, your faith today is not in yourself. Right? Your faith is in the subject of the verb. And you've heard me say this so many times before. But everyone has faith in something, don't we? When someone asks you, how do you know you have eternal life? What is the first word that comes to mind? And honestly, I think for all of us, in some way, shape, or form, this word comes to mind at times. It's a small word. It's one letter, it's a vowel, it's the letter I. How do you know that you have eternal life? Well, I've done this. How do you know that you are right with God? Well, I have done that. You know, by the grace of God, I am who I am. Not what I've done, but through Christ and what he has done for me. You know, the devil is always rooting you on, isn't he? He is saying in his deceptive, subtle subtitles, as he whispers to each and every one of you, that's right, you go do it. I know right now you're hearing about Jesus dying and rising for you, the devil says, but no, you must still do more. You must gain your assurance by that subject I, 
And friends, of course, for all of us, truly how legalism, how self-righteousness can continually be the looming umbrella that says, you, you have to finish this. Christ's grace isn't sufficient, the world, the devil, the flesh says. Let's see what the devil doesn't tell you in that moment is what he will say afterwards. And that is, have you done enough? You know, the devil's greatest, I don't know if we call it the greatest talent, but his greatest skill is the master accuser. That's right. Oh, he never stops. Never. Have you done enough? Of course, this is the question that at first you will say, well, have I? Let's, let's give it a try. Let's give it our best and see if we can assess. And soon enough, there we are faced with a terrified soul that says, have I done enough? Have my merits measured up to God? And yes, for all of us, if that is the case, if that is a question we are dwelling upon, guilt will ensue, shame will infest our souls, and there we will be buried in the rabbit hole of a terrified conscience. Do you know what it is to be buried in a rabbit hole of a terrified conscience? That is a picture of despair. A despairing sinner that does not know what to do. A despairing sinner that says, I have to do this, I have to do that, but yet I'm not good enough. Friends, we cannot gain our assurance. Today speaks of that as the Lord has spoken, and there is nothing for us to say. Because the empty tomb says it all. Because we are dead in our trespasses, and we need to be made alive and that is why we rest upon the very Word of God. Our confidence, our boldness, our rest is in those words our Lord has spoken. You know, Easter is our faith. Faith in His life-saving work for you. His saving work. Alone. Alone. What does alone mean? It means this is not just a part of our faith. It is the totality of our faith. Our faith is what He has spoken to us, what He has promised to each and every one of you, what He has actually delivered to you as the empty tomb proves. And thus, with great boldness and joy, we shout out, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. All right. Very good. We, we get to say those words. We didn't earn those words. We didn't speak those words into existence. No, it, it was spoken to us. How comforting that is. For sinner's sake, for you and me, that our Lord endured all, all his life as the perfect sacrifice to that very cross, dying the death, shedding his blood. Three days he would rise, and yes, indeed, he would swallow up death forever. Death is swallowed up. In victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? These are St. Paul's words, aren't they? But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, on this day, death is swallowed up. Death is defeated. Death does not win. Death and its venomous sting 
has been remedied by our Lord's resurrection. You know, this, this sting is not just like a bee sting or even as I was talking to Dave earlier about <coughs> seeing rattlesnakes the other day. This sting is even stronger than a, a rattlesnake biting you. No, this sting that St. Paul is speaking of is the deep gloom of sin, condemnation, and the separation from God. This sting is the monster of death and its ferocious fangs. From this sting, God rescues you. Delivering you from this sting of death. You know, this sting, I can't go to the doctor and somehow find the remedy. You know, without Christ, we are left in this bitter sting. Without Christ, we are left with weep, uh, weeping and, and gnashing of teeth. But friends, this sting of death this day does not, does not win. For our risen Lord has destroyed this very sting. For as it reads in the book of Romans, it is Christ who has delivered up, delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. Yes, we are justified. That's what his resurrection proves to us. Justified means I have nothing else to say because Christ has spoken and he has delivered and he has said it all. He has justified you. He has made you right and reconciled you to God. That is what the empty tomb brings. So friends, take courage because, you know, Easter day is not just any day. But this is the day where the curse has been lifted, where death's eternal stare stares no more, where the doom and gloom of the eternal grave is no longer looming because it is in his resurrection you too shall be raised. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. Do you know where we hear that Bible passage? At every funeral service. Because even in our own death, we are raised to life. You know, friends, eternal life, a lot of people look forward to eternal life, don't they? We're looking forward to it. But friends, do you know this? Because of the empty tomb, you're living it right now. Eternal life is yours. You have life over death right now. And thanks be to God that today, because of the empty tomb, the resurrection of our Lord, there is no doubt. There is no other word to say all is well because the Lord has spoken and His will is done. So go now in victory. 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 The battle has been won. The battle has been won. So go now, redeemed and forgiven. Go now. In the perpetual joy, as death has been swallowed up, forever. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.